Today we continue our East Coast road trip through Ocean City, Assateague, the Outer Banks, and more. I'm riding, 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 riding with my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Guys, I'm free in my RV. It's still dark. Well, you can kind of oh, look at the moon. But in any case, why have we awakened at this uh, ungodly hour? By the way, good morning. Well, the only ferry we could get was the 7 a.m. ferry, and we didn't want to be late, so it is 5.53 a.m. We're about 10 minutes away. Should be fine, right? <laughs> We're going into Delaware. We wait. It is always exciting to get on a ferry, you know, change things up a little bit. And off we go. There's the SS Atlantis and the Cape May Lighthouse. Amazing how the birds will follow the wake of a ship. The sun's peeking out. That would be Cape May in the distance, I believe. There's the Delaware Breakwater and East End Lighthouse. Yes, we're almost there. It is technically not our first time in Delaware, but it kind of is. 
In the past, we've only driven the 23 miles or so on the I-95 corridor that goes through Wilmington. And this time around, I'm sorry to say, the timing isn't really going to work out. We're going to drive around Lewis here and find somewhere to park. It is not a bad looking town, let me tell you. The peculiar building here on the left is the Zwanendel Museum. It is a replica of a Dutch city hall, commemorating Delaware's first settlers, the Dutch. Let's go by the public beach so we can park and take a bathroom break. I forget to go on the ferry. Very nice sandy beach here. Nice beach here. Uh, this says heading parking only, but of course I only had to go to the bathroom. Um, I doubt they're gonna mind. Uh, the parking lot is empty. I doubt they mind. I'll park here for for just a few minutes. And now, I mean, it's early, it's, it's gonna be closed, but we're gonna stop by Dogfish Head, one of my first IPAs. Too bad the timing is not gonna work out, it seems like such a nice area. There are several points of interest around here, Cape Henlopen State Park, also Joe Biden's beach house, no joke, but I doubt they'll let us visit. Still, let's pass by Rehoboth Beach to see Dogfish Head Brewery, and I'm telling you, the idea was to take a later ferry so we could arrive here when the brewery was open, but timing, it doesn't always work out now, does it? And we already have a hard-to-get reservation for tonight, so it's not like we can change plans. Here's Delaware Seashore State Park. One of these days. One of these days. One of these days we'll pay a proper visit to the first state. We are now in Fenwick Island and pretty soon here we're going to cross into Maryland. But first, let's stop by the Fenwick Island Lighthouse. It is very historic, dating back to 1858. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to park and it is not open for climbing anyway, so a drive-by will suffice for today. Now to Ocean City we go! Very touristy, lots of hotels and mini-golf. Here we are, Ocean City, Maryland. We're gonna stop at one of the back streets to take a break and I was gonna walk around a little bit, but realistically speaking, I think it is a better idea to go to our campground first, drop the trailer and then come back. We are meeting up with longtime viewer and friend Dale, also known as the Traveling Elk. This happens to be the eastern terminus of US 50. There's the sign, Sacramento, California, 3,073 miles. US 50, of course, one of the most important cross-country highways. It used to go all the way to San Francisco, but that section was replaced by Interstate 80 in the 1950s. It is one of those mythical, legendary, epic, bucket list drives. 
I'm thinking we might do the whole thing in summer 2022. We'll see. Today we're staying at Assateeg Island National Seashore. I was able to secure a site at the Oceanside Campground. And there's the Verrazano Bridge over Senepuxent Bay. Not to be confused with the larger, more famous Verrazano Narrows Bridge that we drove on a couple of days ago. This one actually has two parallel spans. One for motor vehicles and one for pedestrians and bicycles. And here we are, Assateeg Island. On the left, behind those bushes, that would be the State Park Campground. We're staying a little farther south and here we are, at the National Seashore. I keep saying it, there should be like a fast lane for annual pass holders. Just saying. Here we are. I got site number two by the entrance. That's our campsite. Now let's go all the way to the beach over here. There it is, the Atlantic Ocean. And these beaches are famous for the wild ponies that roam them. Hopefully we'll get to see some. I kind of wish we would have come in the summertime, or at least warmer weather, to take a dip in the water. And that's Ocean City in the distance. And that's the view looking south. Apparently you can drive on the beach. And it is very windy out here. But a beautiful day nonetheless. Let's go back into town. No wild ponies yet, but I've been reliably informed. They come right around sundown. We're going to park here, at the Inlet parking lot, which is free Monday through Thursday. And today happens to be Thursday. Now let's wait for Dale, he should be here any minute. We are now on the boardwalk, and Dale here is gonna give us a tour. <laughs> Dale. It is pretty lively actually, especially compared with other boardwalks we've seen lately. That would be Jolly Roger at the Pier Amusement Park. The whole boardwalk is almost two and a half miles, so as far as the eye can see. It is the Fireman's and a 9-11 uh, memorial. This monument is dedicated to the firefighters of the world and there is a piece of steel from the World Trade Center. Let's check out the Ocean Gallery. It's been here for over 50 years. It looks very interesting from the outside, but I have no idea what to expect inside. And judging by the exterior, I was expecting to find something like East Jesus inside, but not at all, actually. I am pleasantly surprised. There's some horses. Now you said you saw some. Yeah, just in case they don't show up <laughs> <laughs> today or <laughs> tomorrow.
here's the owner. He's a he's an interesting fellow. Now we're going to have some world famous popcorn. World famous. All right, so this is it. I'm going to eat some tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, tonight. Tonight when we watch uh, YouTube. An arcade. We're going to have lunch somewhere nearby and Dell is leading the way. Yes, we're going to this place called Sunset Grill, located at Sunset Marina, just a few minutes away from the boardwalk. Sunset Grill, let's check it out. That's a Florida Keys vibe to it, a little bit. Nice bar. Yeah. All right, here we are with the traveling elk. He lives here too. There she is. And uh, we're going to eat and have a good time. <laughs> and always a good time with Robert. <laughs> with Dale, always a good time too. All right. Four states. Dale is the kind of guy who knows how to have a good time. And after lunch, he said, let's go to a brewery. And uh, here we are. Burley Oak Brewing Company at nearby Berlin, Maryland. Cheers, everybody! Cheers! It was a great time to see Dale once again, which we've actually bumped into each other along the road in four different states now. We're going to end our day by doing a hike at Assateague Island. And maybe we'll finally get to see the famous horses, huh? Let's go on the little trail here. It's only three quarters of a mile. Average walking time, 45 minutes. It's longer than I expected, but shouldn't be too bad. We still have about an hour of daylight left, so we should be good. Let's do it. Part of the idea of doing this trail is the possibility of maybe, just maybe seeing some wild ponies, but we'll see. Baltimore Boulevard. Interesting. Now where are the horses? Yes, according to the sign, this used to be a road built in the 1950s and destroyed by a storm in 1962. And this is all that remains nowadays. There's some kind of photo shoot going on. I don't think we're gonna see any horses. I have a bad feeling about this. What do you think? Yeah, it's been a pretty nice trail. Pleasant, but I'm sorry to report no horses. No horses to be found. Oh well. We're almost back. 
Hello there. You're so cute. My little pony. Well, yeah, lo and behold, as we're going back to the campground, the ponies are everywhere. Hello there, little pony. Now our day is complete, but let's finish it at the beach. Definitely no wild ponies on the beach at this time. I guess the horses never went to the beach. Maybe they don't like the wind. They are staying on the main campground road. I see it. I'm so excited. Hello, Mr. Cardinal. This may not be the most iconic wild setting. Somehow I was expecting to see them galloping into the surf at dusk. But hey, at least we got to see some wild ponies, and that's the main thing here, so it was totally worth our one night stay. Yeah, that's all we could get. Well, we woke up at the crack of dawn in order to see the sunrise. Well, how cool is that? Yeah, from here we get to see the Ocean City Ferris wheel illuminated at this early hour. I still can't get over the fact that they have the lights on on the ferris wheel and how cool it looks from all the way out here. Like a beacon of fun, if you will. Pelicans! And on the other side, they're nearly full moon. All right, it is time to go. Ooh, what 
do we have here coming up ahead? Is this like the farewell committee? Well, what do you know? We have some wild horses bidding us farewell. Very cool. You can never have too many wild horses now, can you? Riding, riding. So why did the horse cross the road? My RV. We've got ourselves a pony jam. And with that, we say goodbye to the wild ponies of Assateague Island. Now the road will take us farther south to Chincoteague in Virginia, another island inhabited by wild horses. Now let's see if the weather cooperates because there is rain in the forecast. The plan was to go into Sinkatig, I think that's how you pronounce it. There's more wild horses and stuff there, but with this weather, I'm like, eh. let's continue. Let's get to, to our harvest host early, you know, take a break. And then we have the live stream, so we might stop. You know, we have three hour drive, so we might stop here and there. And we have the, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, which is kind of bucket list. Well, we're about to take the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, 17.6 miles long. This is one of those tunnels in which you're supposed to turn off your propane, and I did, before we left as a TIG. But they don't really check, they just ask. There's a scenic overlook. I am so looking forward to this crossing. I have always been fascinated by engineering feats like this one. The bridge tunnel was opened on April 15, 1964, and in the 1990s they constructed the parallel trestle. As of 2022, construction of a parallel tunnel is underway. It has 12 miles of trestle, two one-mile long tunnels, four artificial islands, four high-level bridges and approximately two miles of causeway. I think we're gonna drive under that war vessel there, coming up on the right. Riding, riding. Yeah, I think we just did. Mind-boggling, huh? That's Virginia Beach. We're almost on the other side. Riding, riding. Well, we made it through the Chesapeake Bay Bridge and uh, tunnels. Tunnels, plural, there's two tunnels. Now we're a little over an hour away from our harvest host for today and yeah, I'm gonna take a break. Take it easy. After some torrential rain, eventually we've made it to our harvest host, the Whipping Radish, North Carolina's oldest microbrewery, and uh, yeah, at some point we crossed into North Carolina. One of the more difficult harvest hosts when it comes to parking, especially if you have a towable, 
Luckily, at this point, I'm like, hold my beer. I shouldn't brag. I still get into pickles from time to time, believe it or not. Well, good morning. Today we're going to the Outer Banks. Hoping for a sunny day here because we brought up the battery down to 30% and I don't really feel like like firing up that internal combustion generator, but it was sunny this morning. This feels more like like fog. So hopefully it'll it'll burn off. Burn up in the next couple hours. We're going to Kitty Hawk. What are you doing up there? Yeah, goats are kind of crazy, aren't they? And the sun came out as we cross over onto the barrier island chain known as the Outer Banks. Yes, I said Kitty Hawk, because our first stop is going to be at the Wright Brothers National Monument. But here's a fun fact. When the news came out about the Wright Brothers flight, they said it happened at Kitty Hawk. Well, actually, Kitty Hawk is about five miles north of the site, but at the time, it was the closest town. Nowadays, the actual location is Kill Devil Hills, and uh, here we are. I was gonna say it again, but I am not. Well, here we are at the very spot where the airplane was invented, and uh, this is apparently the field. So we're gonna go into the visitor center. We're gonna see what's going on in there, and then see all the all the markers out here uh, that mark the spot where the first flight took place and the second flight and and whatnot. Let's go into the visitor center, and in true national park tradition, they have a raised relief map of the site. That's where all the flights took place. And here is a picture of the first flight. Sometimes I find it peculiar all these events from the past being so well documented. And here's a reproduction of the flyer itself. The original is at the Smithsonian, at the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., and we saw it a couple of years ago. They have all these exhibits explaining all the problems they had to solve in order to achieve controlled heavier-than-air flight. And to these days, airplanes operate on the same basic principles of lift, roll, pitch, yaw. Here's a piece of the original fabric and the unique engine crankcase. That was very interesting. Now here's the airfield. Here we can see, reconstructed, the hangar and the living quarters from the Wright Brothers 1903 camp. Not exactly roughing it now. Actually, the first year they lived in a tent, and then they built the second hangar and moved into the first hangar. Here we are, this would be the very spot where they would, would have taken off um, this field here. The prevailing winds from the ocean, of course. And those are the markers. Let's, let's walk over there, the markers that mark where they, they, the, all the flights landed. And this would have been the end of the first flight, we just walked it in about. Probably we could run quicker than <laughs> the flight flew here. Just 12 seconds, 120 feet from, from the takeoff point back there. Of course, they improved and then the flights became longer. There's some more modern aircraft and yes, they do have biplane sightseeing tours. So they used a launch rail to provide a smooth surface for takeoff. Let's go see the monument. There's no specific oversized parking, but there's no one here by the back and we'll be quick. Now we're gonna hike all the way up there. Shouldn't be too bad. And wouldn't that be cool to go on a biplane ride? That almost looks like Red Baron's plane. Hmm, maybe not. Another time, perhaps. 
Here's another view of the site from this higher perspective. And we're almost there. Oh, that's a cool sculpture. Let's go down there next. In the Tini 3, our trusty home on wheels. And the site where history was made. The birthplace of controlled powered heavier than air flight. And the reason they chose this site? The prevailing winds coming from the Atlantic Ocean. Well, this right here would be a life size representation of that picture we saw inside the visitor center. And it's cool to see it, you know, 3D, you know, from uh, that perspective. Let's go all the way around and see it from the photographer's perspective. Here's the exhibit explaining what we're looking at. Let's get a little closer to the action here. This is the perspective we never saw in that picture, huh? from the front. Or at least we can imagine what it would have looked like from the front. Now we continue. I decided to take the next street over closer to the coast but I've realized that seeing the ocean from the road is rather uncommon pretty much everywhere. Roads like A1A by Flagler Beach, Florida or California Highway 1 are extremely rare. So we're going to get back on the main road, which is US 158. Here on the right, Jockeys Ridge State Park, home to the tallest sand dune on the East Coast. We'll be back to explore someday. Coming up there in the distance, the Bodie Island Lighthouse, dating back to 1848. Around here also is the Oregon Inlet Campground, which comes highly recommended, but that's not where we're staying tonight. We're going to drive across Oregon Inlet onto Pea Island. I can't help but compare this drive with one I have done many, many times, and that would be the Overseas Highway. I certainly get a Florida Keys vibe from this road. Is it me or does this feel like a less developed Florida Keys? I mean, geographically, both island chains are very similar. Now comes the moment when Robert does something really stupid. I wanted to stop, maybe climb over the sand dunes, see the ocean. You know, I love doing that, but I didn't take into account the fact that the sand was so soft and so loose and so deep. And by the time I noticed, there was just too much traffic to get right back on the road, so eventually friction won the battle over momentum. And we got stuck. Really stuck. Luckily, eventually someone stopped to give us a hand, help us out, but the camera crashed, so I have no video of the rescue to show you. Whoever you are, if you're watching, thank you. You really did save us a lot of trouble. Now, let's not do that again. Let's stop to take a break. Oh, it looks like you can drive on the beach, but we won't be doing that. Not until we have a more capable vehicle. Check it out, fly Pelican! You know, I grew up by the Straits of Florida, 
I basically saw it every day until I migrated at the age of 16 and I love the ocean. I love the beach. It may seem like a contradiction, but along with the mountains and the desert, a beach is my happy place. If it was just a little warmer, I would be jumping in that water right now. We continue. There is the iconic Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, our next stop. And here we are. Well, there it is, the famous Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. Uh, unfortunately, as of October 2021 here, you're still not allowed to go to, to the top, COVID. So um, all we can do is just take a picture from this uh, disadvantageous position because the sun is right behind us, but it is what it is. We'll continue, we'll be back one of these days. The lighthouse was constructed in 1802 and then rebuilt in 1868 after the Civil War. In 1871, it was the tallest brick lighthouse tower in the world. It was moved to its current location in 1999. Well, that's the lighthouse back there, but now we're gonna go to the original location where the lighthouse used to be located, which is by, right by the beach here. Well, it was marking the storm surge from different hurricanes. Wow. Well, yeah, apparently the shoreline has been receding over the years, and well, the lighthouse was far away from the from the, from the shoreline in 1852. Right now, it would, would have been too close, so that's why they moved it. We are here, so um, going towards the water. I imagine the, life, the lighthouse would have been somewhere in that vicinity. Which, let's walk into the beach right now because it's actually a very, very nice beach. Such a beautiful day here at the beach. I don't really, I don't even feel like leaving, but we have a ferry to catch, so we gotta go. But look at that. This is this uh, this pole right here marks the original location of the Hatteras, the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. Right here, so close, so close to the ocean. I can see why it would be uh, dangerous, you know, with hurricanes and stuff, like to keep it here. So in 1999. They moved it over there, which is quite a distance. Must have been quite the feat of engineering. All right, let's go back. Let's go back now. We're going to take yet another ferry to Ocracoke Island, which is the next island, only accessible by ferry, by the way. And there's another ferry going back to the mainland, but we haven't been able to reserve that one. So there is a distinct possibility we may have to backtrack tomorrow. Not ideal, but hey, what can you do? Someone recognized our rig while we waited for the ferry, which took about an hour. And there's our ride! The distance itself, it is not that far, but the ferry has to make a big loop to avoid the Hatteras Inlet Crab Spawning Sanctuary. Okay, let's do it for the delicious crabs. Nice houses here. And Minitini 3 on a ferry once again. Yay, pelicans!
nice sandbar. We definitely have to come back to this area. And so much wildlife. We decided to have lunch inside the camper. Why not? Hold on, we got ourselves a stowaway. We're staying at the Ocracoke Campground, managed by the National Park Service, because all this is part of the Cape Hatteras National Seashore. And it is right here, on the left. And there's no one here to greet us. I mean, we already paid, so I guess we just go to our site and that's it, right? This is it. It is a short, if steep, hike over the sand dune to access the beach of the Atlantic Ocean. And what a beautiful day it is. We've made it to our beach in Ocracoke Island. Perhaps a little too late in the day and in the season to truly enjoy it, but this is a wonderful beach. Look at that. It's a great swimming beach. And uh, now it's definitely uh, in the list. It's one of those places. Someday I'd like to return to. As you know, as I keep saying, you know, this kind of trip through the coast was more of like an overview the discovery trip in a sense and I knew we're not we were not gonna enjoy fully any of these areas but we'll be back tomorrow it's this is kind of the end of the of the trip in a sense for the next two days we're just gonna drive west towards Atlanta actually I wanted to take the other ferry but I forgot the name of the town we couldn't we couldn't uh, find tickets it was uh, completely booked so we have now we have to go all the way back through the outer banks and then west towards Atlanta the sunset is upon us it is magical there is some kind of photo shoot happening and uh, Take a look at those colors, as another day comes to an end. That's a pretty elaborate sand castle. Let's go into town to grab a quick bite. Ocracoke is supposed to be a quirky little town, so I'm kind of bummed out we arrived so late. 1718 Brewing here on the right seems happening, but let's see what else there is. There are a couple of other places, restaurants and whatnot, but that first brewery was really happening. 
and we've had good luck with breweries lately, so that's what we're going to do. We got fish, we got pretzels, we got cheese curds and flies! Yay! Oh, that was pretty good. Good beer, good food and lots of fun. Now let's get back to the campground. Oh, check out the moonrise. Good morning. Ooh, how elegant. The flight of the pelican. Poetic license, right? Fly, pelicans! And there it is! Now tell me, did you see the green flash? Rewind, you know you want to do it. Pelican! It is magnificent. here in the beach. This was nice. And I've never actually done chicken breast on this grill, so we'll see how it comes out. This is almost ready. So yeah, cheddar grilled chicken sandwich. Cheers. Mm. It's really good. Mm. Well, it is with a heavy heart that we depart from paradise. We really like this place. Okra Cook. I believe that's how it's pronounced. We will definitely return sooner, sooner than later. Maybe spend three or four nights. I mean, it is boondocking, so that kind of limits how long you can stay Turn left. without going to the dump station and whatnot. But in a quarter mile, turn right toward North Carolina 12. Now we're gonna do a, a uh, resort tonight because I believe we deserve it. Full hookups, we have to do laundry. There's an, a year long uh, swimming pool, so I'm assuming it is heated, so I'm looking forward to that. And then tomorrow, we go inland towards Atlanta. Naturally, it is Sunday, and everybody wants to get back to the mainland. Well, to make a very long story short, an hour and a half later, we are at the front of the line. 
where we remain, waiting for another hour. I think we have time to explore a little bit. I think there comes our ride. Right there. And that is the line. Oh my gosh. Some people do have priority. I'm assuming residents, employees, and this large contraption here that is going to take up half of the ferry. Hey, wait a minute, it is my turn. I guess they have to get the weight right with that heavy thing on the left hand side. Here we go. Yeah, they made a very small dent on that line. Those people are gonna be there for hours. Whoa, that thing was heavy. It is going to be a busy rest of the day for the ferry, that's for sure. This is where we're going to stay, at the KOA Resort. I did get a $50 discount with my KOA points. Yeah, this is probably overkill for only one night, but it is exactly what we need. Well, after several days dry camping, I decided to splurge here with the deluxe site, with the KOA patio, at the KOA here at Cape Hatteras K KOA Resort. And it actually does. This is the f one of the first KOA resorts that actually feels like a resort. And I imagine this in the dead of summer is gonna be a madhouse, but right now it's half empty, it's very quiet, it's beautiful. The pool looks to be super clean. They have a super clean laundry facility that we're gonna use today. And yeah, we're not gonna take advantage of all the amenities, but all we need really it's one good night with full hookups and, um, and laundry. We need to do laundry. And now we're just gonna have some wine, grill some burgers and just uh, relax here with the few hours of sunshine we have left. <sighs> Saying goodbye to the Outer Banks. Mm, that's gonna be good. Coming soon. The swimming pool. Let's go see the sunset. There's a park right across the road from the KOA. How many sunrises and sunsets have we seen now over the past few days? All different.
don't think I've ever seen so many pelicans in my life. Let's go back to the KOA. It is probably the largest swimming pool I've ever seen in a campground. Well, good morning. We do have beach access here at the KOA. Yay. Here we are. Well, you know, you know I had to do it at least once, right? Put my feet in the water. And uh, it is frigid. But it's very nice. We'll be back. We'll be back to the Outer Banks for sure. And, uh, and enjoy this, this marvelous beach. Look at that in season because right now it's i mean i'm sure if you're from from scandinavia you'll find the water balmy but this florida man finds it you know uncomfortably cold in any case i keep saying goodbye to the outer banks but now for real now for real we're uh, we're going away from this idyllic place we're just gonna have breakfast and we're heading west towards uh, charlotte area can you tell I don't really want to go? But as I mentioned a few days ago, we do have to be in Miami the 1st of November. And we want to stop by Atlanta to see family on the way there. So the road beckons. It is going to be one of those all-day uneventful drives. We'll pass by Raleigh, North Carolina's capital city. We're going to spend a night at Charlotte at the Fort Mill KOA. We've been there before. Riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV, yeah, I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I Cause I'm free in my RV Driving The pavement rushing under the tires A different time zone You know I'm gonna get higher Cause I'm on fire Riding Have no idea where we'll end up tonight It doesn't matter Riding in my RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free In my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding Riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free In my RV Yeah, to Somewhere remote we're gonna boondock We'll see the Milky Way or a shooting star if we're in luck Oh, this is clamping, yeah You know It is the way that we like to roll And making memories out here is what nurtures my soul Yes, I am riding, yeah Riding Riding in my RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free In my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding Riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free In my RV 
yeah. And this is it. We've arrived at our North Florida retreat, also known as Pelicamp. I really hope you have enjoyed our fall 2021 season. Until the next one, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. I'm free in my RV. Yeah, I'm riding, riding, riding. I'm riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. Yeah.